Okay, the lesson today is about a uh, right triangle. And so when you're looking at a right triangle, and again, um, these notes are on Canvas. So if you want to get some extra credit, you can fill in the notes as you go. So um, it just sort of starts out with what is a right triangle? A right triangle that is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle. And the other two angles will have to be acute angles. Okay. It is a triangle which has 92 degrees. The two sides that make up the right triangle are called the legs, and the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. In a right triangle, if A and B are the measures of the legs and C is the hypotenuse, then, and you've probably all heard of the Pythagorean theorem, it means that A squared, which is a leg, plus B squared, which is also a leg, is equal to C squared. The hypotenuse C is always the longest side. So this is kind of a way um, that you can kind of like look at it. So you're basically making a right triangle and these are like the little sides to it. So that's one little visual. And this one says find the length of the hypotenuse. So this would be the hypotenuse. So I'm going to let this equal A and this equal B. And it doesn't really matter which one you let equal A and which one you let equal B. Because what you're going to do with the Pythagorean theorem is you're going to square them anyway. So we're going to have that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So I'm going to take that 12 and I'm going to plug it in. And if I plug in that 12 and I square it, so I'm going to have 12 squared plus 16 squared, ah, I didn't do that right, squared is equal to C squared. Well, 12 squared is going to give me 144, and 16 squared is going to give me 256. So if you add those together, you're going to get 400, okay? So basically what you get is you get that 400 is equal to C squared. Now, you can use your calculator if you want to, to figure out what the square root of 400 is. But I had you do a delta math that time. And so what you do is you take that 400 and you break it down into perfect squares. So that would actually break down to 4 times 100 because that's 400. 4 is a perfect square and 100 is a perfect square. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 100, well, the square root of 4 is going to give you 2. The square root of 100 is 10, so 20 is equal to C. So C is equal to 20. Now, some of the ones that you're going to have on the homework are not going to come out evenly. So you can basically just put that and then do the square root. You can do that into your calculator, or you can also do that into... Um, the scientific Desmos, it will work. Um, <clears throat> the next one says find the length of the hypotenuse. So on this one, if we want to find the length of the hypotenuse, first of all, we have to have this other side. So we got the 7. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I'm going to let this be a, and I'm going to let this be b, but it doesn't really matter. So you're going to have 5 squared plus 7 squared is equal to c squared. So 5 squared is going to be 25. 7 squared is going to be 49. And if I add them together, I'm going to get 74. So 74 does not turn out nicely. So basically we have that c squared is equal to 74. Depends on how your answer is written. So if I have c squared is equal to 74, then c is either going to be plus or minus the square root of 74. But it's the side of a triangle. So the side of a triangle cannot be negative, so it would be positive square root of 74. Now, if you put that into your calculator, you could round that to the nearest tenth. So if I put that in, I get that c is equal to 8.6. So that's my hypotenuse. Let's find the length of the hypotenuse given that the legs of the triangle are 6 feet and 12 feet. Well, 
You could draw you a right triangle so that you can visualize a lot better. I'm much more of a visual person. So we're trying to find the hypotenuse, which is going to be here. This is 6 feet, and this is 12 feet. So again, this is my A, this is my B. So I'm going to have 6 squared plus 12 squared is equal to C squared. So that's going to be 36 plus 144. So if I add 36 and 144 together, I'm going to get 180. So I'm going to get that C squared is equal to 180. Now, what I do know about that is 180, and I can kind of think of it like this, because eventually we are going to try to write them with uh, radicals. I know that 9 will go into there, and it's going to be 9 times 20. Now, why did I pick 9? I picked 9 because 9 is a perfect square because 3 times 3 is 9. Now, if I keep going and I want to make sure that I get all my perfect squares, I'm not really doing prime factorization, but I also have a 20, and I know that 20 is 4 times 5. So if I want to rewrite my 180 with perfect squares, I'm going to have 9 times 4 times 5. Well, the square root of 9 is going to be 3. The square root of 4 is going to be 2, and I can't do anything to 5. So I get 6 square root of 5. Now, the other thing that you can do, too, depending on what your answers look like, is you can take the square root of 180. Put it into your calculator, and you get that C is also equal to 13.4. So sometimes your answer might be written as a radical, and sometimes your answer might be written as a decimal. All right, so now we've got to be careful, because now we're trying to find the missing leg. Okay, so this has got to be our C because our hypotenuse is always the longest side and it's always the C. This is a leg, we'll let that be A, and then this is also a leg, but we don't know what that is. So when we do the Pythagorean theorem, we've got to be careful to make sure that we put them in the right spot. So I'm going to put my A in here. I don't know, whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know my B, so since I don't know my B, I'm just going to leave that I'm just going to leave that as plus, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to leave that as plus b squared. Plus b squared. And then I get 10 squared. Okay? Now, this is going to be 16 plus b squared is equal to 100. And I want to solve for b squared. So I'm going to si subtract 16 from both sides. So I get that b squared is equal to 86. So B is equal to the square root of 86. Ah, I don't know why I wrote 4. 86. Now, there's nothing that I can do to 86. If I factor down 86, it's going to be 2 times 43. There's absolutely nothing that I can do. So this would probably be one that would be a good one to do the square root. So when I do the square root, I get that B is equal to 9.3. Okay, and it's 9.3 centimeters. Okay, this one, we're going to try to find this one, and this is the side that I usually say is A, so I'm going to keep that as A. This is B and this is C. So we got A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. I don't know my A squared, so I'm going to leave it with A squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. Well, a squared plus 144 is going to be equal to 169. So I'm going to subtract 144 from both sides. So if I subtract 144 from both sides, I'm going to get 25. So I get that a squared is equal to 25, and this is an easy one because then that just means that a is equal to 5 because it comes out nicely. Okay, now, in the diagram shown, the three points A, B, and C, which are the vertices of a triangle, state the length of the line segment A, B. Okay, so if I want to figure out what A, B is, if it's on a graph, I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? That's going to give me 6. State the length of the line B, C. So, if it's B, C, I'm going to just change this. So, I'm going to have 
um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it says to calculate the length of AC. Well, if this is six and this is eight, I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem. So I have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, because that's what this is going to be. AC is the same thing as C. And so I'm going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared, and that's going to give me my C squared. So I know that this is going to be 36 plus 64. Well, 30 pl 36 plus 64 is 100, and that's what's equal to C squared. So the square root of 100 is going to be 10. So the length of my hypotenuse in that case is going to be 10. Find the length of the missing side of the right triangle if one leg is 4 and the hypotenuse is 8. So basically with questions like this, you need to draw the picture and you need to fill it in. So the hypotenuse is 8 feet and one of the legs is 4 feet. doesn't really matter which one you let. I'm going to let that equal to B. So I'm going to have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Just make sure that your hypotenuse is your C. Okay. So we're going to have 4 squared plus b squared is equal to 8 squared. So that's going to be 16 plus b squared is equal to 64. I'm going to subtract 64 minus 16, and that's going to give me that b squared is equal to 48. Now, we could take the square root of 48, depending on how your question is written, so we could take the square root, which is going to give me 6.9, or we can take our 48 and break it down. So if we break that down, 48 is going to be the same thing as, um, well, 8 times 6 is 48, but 4 times 12 would be 48. Then I can break 12 down again to 4 times 3. So when I go to write this out, it's going to be 4 times 4 times 3. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of another 4 is 2. So I'm going to have 4 square root of 3. 4 square root of 3 is the same thing as 6.9.